Warning, this show contains adult language. Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. All right, this is, I want to talk about today of how there is so much in the city, there's so much around us, so many useful resources that we don't even see. And I see so many people struggling and wondering, well, uh, you know, I can't, I can't, and there's this and that, some problems, and I can't afford this and that. Guys, there's free stuff everywhere, and it's good for the planet for you guys to utilize the things that I'm going to share with you today. And it's the abundance and scavenging the city. Some of this stuff may seem a little strange for you guys, for some of you who would look and, you know, who've got the uh, ego, I would say, and go, I'm not going to go grab something that's next to a dumpster or sidewalk uh, shopping or something like that. I'm afraid what people would think of me or something, you know. I, I think that... You know, if you can disregard that and put that down and look at, put it on the shelf for a little while and look and say, you know what, these are actually things that can bring me joy. These are actually things that are useful. And you know what, I can help my planet. I can help my community. I can help myself. So the very first one I have here in the abundance of scavenging the city is free food. So I see a lot of people who are poor. And I think a lot, when I think to myself, who is going to hear this type of message? Who are the people that are into this kind of stuff? And I think it's the majority of the poor, I think, and a lot of uh, the hipsters and cool people who are into uh, repurposing things, and um, like such as Rob Greenfield, those kind of styles. I haven't heard of Rob Greenfield. You should check him out. Really cool dude. I would love to meet him one day and get him on the show. Um, but yeah, there's so many things we can do as far as free food for a lot of people who are homeless or down and out poor. And even if you're, you're you know, your life's going to take a turn. I'm doing a lot of these shows because I think hard times are coming and we're all going to have to learn some skills and scavenging the city, I think is one of the most abundant places you can do this in. And as far as food guys, there is me and my grandfather. There's going to be a lot about my grandpa. He, he's the one who taught me a lot about this stuff. And you may think this is disgusting. But we used to go behind the uh, Albertsons, the grocery store, uh, when I got a house. I remember he told me, uh, hey, drive around the back. I want to see if there's some uh, recyclables. We're going to talk about that later, too. Actually, how you can make money. But we went to the back, and there was the dumpster there, and they had these little cool wood uh, baskets. And there was trash, you know, and trash bags and stuff like that. But they literally took these bananas and just threw them all, like stacked them all on top of the, the, the trash bin there. Now, inside the trash bin, basically. And he was like, go and grab me one of those things. I want to make some banana bread. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, that's gross at first I looked at. But when you we looked at it, they weren't really rotting. They weren't touching anything disgusting around the edge, you know, of the, of the trash bin. In fact, everything was really clean because most of the garbage was like styrofoam and cardboard boxes and uh, bagged up stuff. And these things were literally in cardboard boxes and these little wooden crates. And I just simply picked them up off the top, put them in the truck, and he made me, of course, take all of them. And uh, we washed them up at home, and he made some banana bread with chocolate chips and stuff, and we composted the rest of the banana peels. I spoke in another show how he used banana peels for uh, uh, roses. It makes them actually flourish. And yeah, I've seen such things as lettuces and stuff, especially in very wealthy neighborhoods. Uh, if you go back there, of course, you'd want to ask permission um ish <laughs> but if they're by a trash bin or they're in a in a trash bin they're most likely going to be thrown away and sometimes you'll get something like iceberg lettuce and still cold uh and you can take off the outer layers and get to the heart of it which is still cold and still has like fresh drops of water on it and you can actually make yourself a salad there's free food i've heard of people getting pizzas um i heard all kinds of different stuff as far as food goes like uh, guys, there is a, a, an abundance out there. And if anything, which we're going to talk about, well, I won't want to give it away. We're going to give you guys some more uses with uh, dumpster diving for uh, uh, free food. Um, but uh, the next one that you have for free food, which is not so disgusting, is actually, which I probably should have opened up because I probably lost a lot of you. But if I did, uh, oh, well. Uh, fruit trees. Now, it is, I think that there's there's a a politeness that you should probably ask somebody because i was nurturing an orange tree i remember in in a house i was living in and the apartment buildings the parking lot was right over the other side of my fence and next thing i know i see these hands coming up my whole she the tree is shaking and people are just ripping stuff off and ripping the branches off i wasn't too uh, cool with that 
But it would be, you know, a little polite if you went and asked somebody, hey, may I pick some fruits off your uh, area, you know, be over your, you know, this, this was just what's hanging over the fence. But it's totally legal. I mean, I think that there's some propriety about it and some, you know, being kind about it and courteous. But I've gotten avocados, I've gotten lemons, limes. I used to pick out all my spots when I'd be driving around the, the cities. And literally, you could see them rolling down the street, like like lemons and oranges. That's how I found it. I'm driving, all of a sudden, I just see like an orange and a lemon laying there. And I look down the alleyway, and you could just see a whole bunch laying there. So I went and picked a couple up, looked at them. I was like, well, you know, that's, that's something I could use. I use limes for everything, lemons and limes. And um, yeah, you can go over and get these fruit trees. And literally, some people in backyards, you can go and look and see stuff just falling down, persimmons, and at least where I live right now, and even down to avocados, guys. You can go over to knock on the door and tell, ask the people politely and say, hey, I can make this a regular thing where I can come, I'll clean this all up for free, and I'll actually bake you an apple pie or make you some banana bread or, you know, what's really cool over here is we have macadamia nuts all over the place. You can go and collect all the macadamia nuts and tell them, hey, I'll make you some macadamia butter or I'll crack the uh, seeds and I'll, I'll save you a whole, bring you a whole bag and, and return for me in exchange for me cleaning up all this stuff for you, all this fruit. So really, really cool stuff there. Um, <clears throat> my next ones I have is farmer's market farms. And a friend of mine actually turned, I never would have thought of this. He actually went over to where the, the he got the address for, from the farmer's market of where these farms are actually located. And they have, uh, be, right in front of their driveway, they actually have a big giant uh, compost pile. And all, a lot of the produce they don't sell and stuff just starts to turn, right? Like tomatoes and stuff like that. And a lot of you guys probably aren't aware that... Uh, tomatoes that are starting to get really soft and stuff like that you could actually can those you can boil them up and everything get rid of the skins and actually make tomato sauce tomato paste uh just uh, stew tomatoes um he's gotten stuff such stuff as mushrooms zucchini cucumbers and another cool thing is like a lot of big giant plants that were growing out there uh, vegetables you can actually go like pumpkins and zucchini got too big for market they'll just throw them over in the compost pile and of course you probably want to ask permission first but i'm sure they wouldn't bother if you took one zucchini but take that and you got free seeds not only that you have something that's land race that's bred for this biome wherever you live and take those and go start your own garden you're getting seeds for free <clears throat> so yeah lots of free food Next one on my list is firewood, and oh my god, I think my my grandfather, which we called Zeda in Russian, uh, which is my heritage, uh, I think he made me do all kinds of different stuff over here. <laughs> he got me going with this, got me into this this free scavenging stuff. But yeah, we with my grandfather, we got oak, we got eucalyptus, we got hard woods for firewood, and a lot of this is already pre chopped up because. They have to pick up the large pieces and, and manageable weight and, and size for somebody to pick up and throw in the back of a truck. While driving around in the city, uh, there'd be these fallen trees and sometimes, you know, it'd be off, uh, you know, the side of a, a apartment building or something. <clears throat> they would chop everything up, didn't have enough room in the wood chipper or to haul it all off and it's just sitting there, nobody's around. I'm pretty sure you're not going to get arrested for loading up a truck full of firewood, right? Cleaning something up, you know, you might want to check. Uh, but I've been doing it for years and we've really had no problem. But guys, I'm talking about oak, oak trees. Uh, there's a huge rainstorm that's happening today as I record the show. And uh, there's going to be a lot of fallen trees. A lot of people don't know that oak trees have a very shallow root system. The root system kind of looks like the top of the tree, you know, where it's just this kind of like a mushroom. And you'll see them when they're falling over. There'll be this big, giant, round, shallow root system, which is really cool. Because another use, I've seen people... Or heard about somebody making money is they would take these giant root balls and they would cut off the tree and just take the roots the big old heart and what they did is they would shave those off they'd sell them to somebody who would take them and sawmill them and they would make coffee tables and stuff because it's this dense knot knotted wood with all these nice little fibers and and uh um like configurations it's like art artwork so you can actually make a lot of money by picking up giant root balls but yeah firewood for sure, we always had an abundance of free firewood, even in the middle of the city. My grandfather was like me. We, I can have a fire every single night. Even in the summer, I could actually have a little fire. It keeps the smoke, helps keep the uh, mosquitoes away and stuff like that. I just love the, the smell of it. The smell of it on my clothes the next day is like perfume. So yeah, there's free firewood. Free firewood and construction sites as well is where I used to go. Having all this hard wood around was cool, but it was a pain in the butt splitting. 
uh, what I would do is go down to construction sites and all the end of the two by fours, six inch, one footers and stuff like that, they'd have this big giant pile. I don't know if you're gonna find it nowadays, but this is something where you definitely wanna ask permission to, you don't wanna get in trouble. But they'll just have this big old wood pile where they're gonna throw in the dumpster or, haul, or they have to pay somebody to haul it away. You come over with your pickup truck or your car, bundle all this stuff up. What's nice is if you're driving a regular old car with a trunk or something, two by fours could be stacked relatively tight and you can get a lot of wood in there. You can use this for building stuff, arts and crafts, firewood, but it's free resources that are otherwise gonna to go to the landfill when you can use it yourself. Now getting a uh, hatchet and splitting up a six inch or a one foot piece of two by four for kindling is way easier than trying to split a uh, you know, big giant one foot diameter oak or, or eucalyptus. So yeah, construction sites are a really good place to find not only wood, I, uh, now that I'm talking about it, all kinds of different scraps and stuff. I mean, there's nails and screws and things that people just throw around, sweep up and throw in the garbage. Uh, and I'm pretty sure guys, pretty sure uh, that's the sad day and age where somebody's afraid to get sued if you went in and offered to sweep the floor up for free in exchange for, you know, screws and firewood or something like that. Um, fallen trees, uh, that's what we were talking about for firewood. I have on my notes here. My next one is compost materials. The abundance of city scavenging. You want to start growing your own food? You want to start, I mean, I'm talking large scale too, guys. The, the amount of lawn clippings that are thrown in green waste, green waste in general, how much free green resources you can get for your compost pile. Dead leaves as well. Really, if, if you guys, to make composting simple for you, some lawn clippings and dried leaves, just mix those two together uniformly, put them in a pile, toss it every once in a while if you want. It's probably the best thing to keep it aerated, but it's going to rot down into some rich, fertile compost for you to actually grow your own food start a community garden to feed the poor people i mean if you're if you're a homeless person or something to me i don't see why you wouldn't go to the parks like the local city parks go up in the little hillside uh, behind where nobody could see plant yourself some zucchini and tomatoes right next to the sprinkler system that keeps the irrigation and just tuck some little stuff just hide it in there and get yourself you know a little five gallon bucket or something make yourself some compost someplace wherever you're at and just slowly go there and start feeding that thing and start growing your own food instead of going out there and having to ask for money and things like that and if we we all started doing things like this around the world around all of our major cities growing edibles foods and things like that i don't think we'd have so much uh homelessness and people going hungry um the, the next one I have here is market uh, farmers' uh, uh, farms. Again, a lot of the uh, scraps and stuff like that, I think that they may have so much abundance. I know that there's a place out here in North County, San Diego, where it's a mushroom farm, and they have these little tiny wood pallets that they, they make, they squeeze into cups, and they grow mushrooms out of them. Well, mushrooms, the mycelium, the network, the, the, the leftovers have so much power and nutrients inside of them in, in conjunction with the wood, wood chips, the little, the little hard balls that they're made out of, uh, it's free. They don't have enough space to deal with this stuff and they have to have a sterilized environment to grow them inside these, these buildings. So they don't want any, they can't reuse it basically. They need to get all this stuff from fresh, sadly. But you, as a gardener, somebody can go and take these things, even for your front lawn. I don't, know if I, I don't think I mentioned that. If you got fruit trees or just trees growing in your, your house and you're not into gardening or all that, you know, producing your own food, but you got flowers and, and an oak tree and stuff, start saving some compost, putting that on top of around your trees, uh, sprinkle it lightly over your lawn right before it rain and watch how rich everything will start to look and you're repurposing. But you can go down to places like this and just get free shovelfuls. Again, me and my grandfather would go down to the cattle ranches and a lot of people who own horses and we'd get all the manure free manure you want now it does come with weed seeds and stuff in it but hey uh you know what are you going to do uh there are ways that you can actually treat your compost the the uh um, cow dung and horse dung and stuff like that chicken chicken manure and you can actually wrap it up inside some plastic and actually bake the heck out of it uh with the heat of itself with some, uh, adding some nitrogen actually give you guys an idea you can urinate on it for extra nitrogen and that will actually make it so hot it, it most likely will burn off most of the seeds i cook them alive um dumpsters as i said with grandpa where we'd go down to uh grabbing all the food scraps now this is when you could just get rotten stuff i mean the stuff that's just turned where you're like i'm not eating that that's that's half rotten it's a whole uh, cardboard box full of apples half rotten 
take that and use that for compost. You guys got free compost, free way to grow your food. In fact, utilizing, if you took like rotten tomatoes and uh, not necessarily lettuce, but like zucchini, pumpkins and stuff like that, and you just just take, take these, throw them inside your lawn grass and your, your uh, um, uh, what do you call it, your, your leaves, your brown leaves that you got, the leaf waste. Mix everything all up to get together. Let it all just rot and then just spread it out in your backyard once everything's all finished, the compost. And watch what's going to happen. You're going to have tomatoes popping up everywhere, volunteers, zucchini, squash, cucumbers, uh, bell peppers, all these things will just start. You don't have to even do anything. That's the beauty of it. <clears throat> I'm too energetic about this show. Um, so yeah, neighborhood for scraps as well. A lot of people have, uh, breads and stuff like that. If you're practicing Bokashi, uh, composting, which is a really cool thing you could do, or just composting in general, there's multiple different ways. So many people have food scraps. And if you just asked them and you told them your story, you're doing what you're doing, you know, bring a five gallon bucket, uh, give it to them with a lid, tell them, just put all your breads your, your, or your food scraps in here, eight shells and stuff like that. All the roots and leaves and things that you don't, rotten vegetables, banana skins and stuff like that. Just toss it in this bucket and I'll actually come twice a week or every weekend and I'll pick it up. Leave it on your doorstep and I'll leave you a nice clean bucket. And in return, uh, I'm saving the earth. Or maybe in return, you could bring them a little batch of tomatoes or something like that once a month. Give a just some sort of equal value for value exchange. Uh, so next is wood pellets. And these things are everywhere, guys. Everywhere. And I, I was talking about them uh, on the last show. Uh, there is a lot of things that you guys can do. You can make porch swings. You can make planter boxes. There, the number. It's just you can make a, a doll houses. You can make forts uh, for my children. Is one of the cool things. I cut all the one by six uh, boards off the top of the pellets and just stack them all up. Clean all the nails out of them and everything. And then I would just leave them there. And I'd tell my my uh, oldest daughter, you know, those are yours. Do what you want to do. Here's a little handsaw, some nails, and a hammer. Go build yourself a fort somewhere. And pretty cool where we live. We live tiny in a uh, stationary RV style, full time. And in the back, we have a little forest. And guess what's out there? <laughs> a little fort. She built herself a little house thing where she's got shelves and all kinds of cute stuff in there. So wood pellets, guys, for firewood. I mean, they're, a lot of them are thrown away for free. There is so many uses uh, that, I mean, you could repair parts of your home with them if you wanted to. You can make siding. You can go and paint each board and actually split them apart like shingles, like uh, wood shingles. <clears throat> and you can actually make siding. If you had enough pitch to a roof, you could actually make a uh, waterproof uh, 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 roof out of these things. So many, many uses for, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Um, cardboard and other recyclables. I was talking about me and grandpa. Me and grandpa driving around. Now, actually, my grandfather was retired. And he liked to go to the horse track to bet on horses. Uh, I never really got too much. I went with him, you know, because he wanted me to chaperone him. And, uh, you know, it's like $3. You can you can put bet 2 bucks like on a horse. Uh, you can do a trifecta, I think it was, where it's $6, where you could pick uh, three horses. And if they cut, those three horses come in at any numbers, you win, actually, which got me a little bit. I won $80 off $6 from aluminum cans and cardboard that we recycled. So a lot of you guys probably don't know that obviously cans are recyclable and it depends on the economy. You'll have to look, but glass is usually not that great. Uh, plastic drinking water bottles and soda bottles are actually probably the, the second to best, uh, or I'm sorry, third to the best, but the, the second to best is aluminum, of course. And you can find these things. Me and my grandfather find them behind uh, uh, grocery stores, apartment buildings, again, dumpster diving. Uh, one cool thing uh, is cardboard as well that a lot of companies will throw off to the side and they have a lot of scavengers that come in pickup trucks uh, like my grandfather and I drive him around and again I didn't think much of it until we filled up the entire back of his truck and it was only a six foot bed guys. We filled that whole thing up and then we went about a foot above the uh, cab. And uh, we went on top of the cab a little bit and tied everything down. I know we look like the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, but we got all that cardboard uh, loaded up for him, took it in, and guess how much it was per ton? $85. I seen it up to $110, and that was probably about 15 years ago. But me and Grandpa went out, and for about two hours, and we made about $80. We took that money and went to the horse track, and uh, 
I just did that uh, about maybe three or four bets, like I says, and then I ended up making eighty dollars. And then we went out to the buffet and ate all you can eat, and just really had a great time sitting there having a beer at the uh, horse races. And not that you have to go gambling or anything like that, but you could, literally, if you guys went out uh, cardboarding, you guys can imagine if you did two or three of these loads, you can probably average about, I would say, about two hundred dollars a day. And then you don't need no contractor's license. Obviously, you don't need any experience. And really, you don't need permission. A lot of these people just, you'll see at the back of like TJ Maxx, not necessarily like grocery stores. You probably ask, have to ask permission because they, they usually recycle their own. But you go to these lower end stores, shoe stores and stuff like that. And uh, the best ones were the um, uh, uh, like f places that sold like refrigerators and stuff and beds. They had these huge, thick pieces of cardboard. They're just thrown out there. Uh, you know, you got to cut them and everything and fold them all up, but they'll just throw them out there and back. And what I used to do is go and ask the manager. I practiced it for a while just to see, just to have like a sort of side hustle thing. And a lot of the people told me, uh, yeah, go for it. The best days are going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's when we get our shipments in and everything. And we'll leave it specifically for you. Guy cuts it up. It will be here at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning. That's usually when I have to get my, you know, my guy go out there and clean everything up. And you're more than welcome to take them. I've even had people tell me that they have a they had a, a white uh, recyclable bin out there for somebody for the, the trash guys to come and pick up. They said they literally had to pay to have the the, the cardboard hauled away. Whereas they said if you're going to be here, you know, every week to pick this stuff up, we'll cancel that expense off our business and you just go ahead and pick it up. Guys, if you got yourself a big enough truck, which I had a dump trailer, and I think I made about. The best I made was about $300 in a day, I believe. And this is a big dump trailer. This thing could hold like five tons, whatever. It's about a 12 by eight feet wide, 12 feet long, eight feet wide, and about uh, six foot walls. Filled that whole thing up. And I ended up making myself about two to $300. I can't remember. It was something really good. I think it was $300. And I did about three of those. And it took me all day to fill that thing up, uh, you know, especially I didn't have all my spots. If you got your spots all picked out, you can really make an income off of this. So guys, yeah, uh, like I said, nobody's telling you what to do. There's no payroll. There's no nothing. You got to have to pay your taxes, but man, it's, it's a pretty lucrative thing. All right. So moving next on dumpster diving in general. Uh, me and grandpa again would go to college dorms, RV parks, uh, apartment buildings and stuff like that. Now my grandfather is one of those old guys and all his, his friends became my friends. And these guys had nothing else better to do, but take apart fans and stuff like that. Some of them knew about uh, transistors and, you know, electrical motors and stuff like that. Met, many big things we found were space heaters, vacuum cleaners, Power drills, believe it or not, like my grandpa uh, got power, the battery operated power drills. It was just that the uh, brushes on the inside of the drill just needed to be replaced. Uh, it's these little things that circle around the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the magnet. You would not believe TVs, big screen TVs and all kind of things that all it needed was a bulb placed in the back if you have the right savvy. And nowadays we have YouTube and Google to look up on how to repair stuff. So... You can literally pick up probably about a four or $500 TV that just needed to be reset somehow with a, maybe a new transistor or just a light bulb, taking it apart. And you can go and sell these things or get yourself a, uh, a brand new TV, you know, for free. So there's so many things dumpster diving beyond food and making, uh, uh, finding recyclables and stuff like that. But so many electronics uh, that, I mean, the, the, I can't even list everything that we'd find. Standing fans. Right when it was summertime, uh, my grandfather found a generator. Somebody just threw a generator, a gas generator, away. Yeah, I get all. I guess I am over fervorous about this, but no, we went and changed the spark plugs and stuff on it. Some weed eaters and stuff like that. Chainsaws. There was so much stuff that you could find in the city. Just abundance. Um, all right, probably not the best thing for most of you guys. I don't know if I've lost people yet. I just think it's super cool. Like. The feeling I just want to give you guys about scavenging is that I, I want to take you guys with me is when I was recycling the cardboard and collect finding such things as like tools and appliances and stuff like that. It just it was relaxing. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to work super hard. It was however, however the pace that I wanted to take. Now, I have that anyways. I'm a, an entrepreneur and own my own business, so I can go to work, not go to work. 
but I have to deal with clients, paperwork and stuff like that. When I was getting this cardboard and finding these things, I would grab each little square of cardboard, little piece of trash that I found, and I would put it inside with, with my, my deal instead of throwing it back in the trash, just as a gesture to look at it. And I thought one time, this was a tree. This was the branch of a tree or something. And every little scrap and piece to go and have the time because nobody's over my shoulder. There's no deadline. You know, there's no uh, liability insurance and all this kind of crap I have to pay for. I can just do what I want when I want. And I choose to save every little piece and do my part to saving the plant. It just felt good. And just the fact of being out there and making two, three hundred dollars in a day with just I can go take a nap, which I'd, I would do. I'd have my load in the back of my trailer and I'm in my, my vehicle. That's where I record my shows right now. I have a little bed in the back and I could just go take a nap down by at the park or down by the beach and just kind of siesta the day away, you know, for just an hour or so and then get back up and, you know, nothing's going anywhere. And it was just a, such a feeling of freedom and something I never really experienced, even in my own business right now, because, you know, there was no there to get to. And if you didn't get enough today, there's probably some tomorrow. And once you get your, your routes and everything going, it's just, it just was so relaxed, relaxing. And I've and the feeling that you're removing this stuff from the landfill uh, for being trashed and all this pollution and repurposing was just a wonderful feeling. And I just wanted to give you guys that is like, yeah, of course, we're not uh, millionaires, right? We're not making, we're not going to be uh, breaking the bank with the loads of money we're going to be depositing in it. But we're getting by just fine. And $300 a day to me, guys, um, that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. One rule, one thing I would like to share with you guys, dumpster diving like that, is that you actually want to take yourself a broom and a dustpan. Is what I used to do, and even though I didn't make a mess, I just kept the place cleaner. Like after I was done grabbing all my cardboard and stuff like that, of course, any mess I made, I'd throw in the bin, like any pieces of like plastic bands or something like that. But I'd also sweep around that area just very quickly and throw it away, and uh, you know, clean everything up so that the the managers and everybody knew that, hey, man, this guy's really uh, taking care of stuff here. And it just gives a little bit of extra. Uh, all right, so my next one is uh, free stuff on the internet. And there's uh, there's OfferUp, there's uh, uh, Craigslist, there's all there's Facebook, there's a uh, curb alert stuff where you can go find free things. Uh, I found a, I got a sink for my my farm. I got a door for my greenhouse. It's the coincidental um, ideology, the 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 philosophy that if you throw something out there, right. It was what I did. My, it was on my notes here. Just ask your neighborhood for something, and I asked for a door. Does anybody happen to have a free door or know anybody who has a door? I got an oak door with a glass window offered to me. For some reason, I didn't get it. I should have, because uh, the cheap door I picked up is rotting. But guys, they knew somebody who knew somebody. You put it out there, and next thing I know, I just put one message out in one city. I had my option of like 15 different doors, guys. I got myself a sink. I had three different options, places. That, the first place I went to, I found a brand new sink that was sitting behind somebody's shed with the faucet and everything all hooked up, one of those uh, uh, utility sinks, and for free. They were just like, get it out of here, man. Get it out. So the amount of free, it's just, it's amazing. The things that you can get, you could, I found, uh, what I'm looking for is free greenhouses. There's a free greenhouse. <laughs> um, there's also uh, free paint, guys. A lot of you guys probably don't know, instead of dumping your paint in the trash can or, or pouring it out to dry out on a piece of cardboard or plywood or something like that, you can actually take it for free, I believe, to the fire department. Uh, if not the fire department, some places there are, you'd have to look for it. It's a recycling, a hazardous waste recycling place for free. You can bring insecticides, hairsprays, gasoline, um, or some stuff that they won't take, you know, transmission oil, engine coolant, but they'll also take paint. And what they do is they take all these paints and they mix them up in this big old vat. And it usually turns gray, but you have a free paint to repaint your house or to, to for whatever. If you're starting a little side business with used palettes and stuff like that, paint them up with some used old gray paint. As long as it's, uh, you know, you got uniformity or even if you got mixed up colors, you can go and get yourself like three different five gallon buckets of free paint and mix up colors and make it a rainbow of gray. So yeah, free paint, free, there's so much free stuff. And I'm running out of time, and I hate this. I want to do shows on my own own terms here. The day after, or late evening of an estate sale is my last thing. I'm going to have to cut it off here, guys. Um, these are times when, when I was moving, having to get rid of everything, when I decided to live minimalistic, essentialistic, or essentialistic, I guess, living. I don't know if that's even a word. Am I making stuff up? Uh, 
I had a weekend and everything went bad. I don't want to tell the story, but uh, I was honest, let my landlord know what was going on. And he's like, you only have this amount of time. I'm like, wait, whoa, man, I got to finish up jobs. I own a business. And he was like, well, I need to get this stuff running. That's it. I'm just, I'm done. I was like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Lesson learned. But when I was selling stuff uh, to really downsize, I did it for two weekends. And literally towards the end of the, of the last weekend, there wasn't, there, a lot of stuff got sold, but a lot of stuff didn't. I ended up giving away tools and really good stuff because I had I was in a pinch for time. And I'm telling you guys, you can go out to these yard sales and estate sales especially and find some really, really good stuff. Turn this into a business or refurbish your house. Give it away. Start some art. Just so many ideas. Guys, the scavenging in the city has so much. The abundance in the city has so much possibilities. And it's a wonderful, like I said, I've given you guys ideas for businesses, how to feed yourself, how to grow a garden, get free seeds. And we haven't even scratched the surface. So before I go, though, I do want to say that I've been thinking about posting uh, extra stuff on YouTube because they don't charge me. If you guys don't know, it does cost to do these shows, these podcasts on the audio. And I'm only allotted so many times, so much time. And I'm trying to keep it down to 20 at max 30 minutes. And we're already over 30 minutes right now. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, guys, that's the end of the show. And I just want to thank each and every one of you guys for being here today and taking the time to listen. And if I brought you guys any value of any type, please, and only if I gave you guys some value, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down. If you gave me a thumbs down, tell me why. I would love to hear your opinion on the subject matter. But it really helps the algorithms for the show to get out. And if I've given you something in return, please feel free to share this show, comment, all of those things help us to develop and keep this show up and running. If you guys want to get a hold of me, the email is down below. It's up and in its show at gmail.com. So guys, as I always say, go out there and have yourself a new life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it, and bone it, my friends.